Good, uh, good day, everyone. My name is John Glantz. I run the CX Consulting or the CX Transformation Consulting Practice here at Inflow uh, CX. And uh, and so today we're going to be talking about is outsourcing right for you. Uh, just a quick note on some upcoming webinars. On the 25th, we have uh, Genesis Admin Training. And on the 27th, can I bring my own carrier to Genesis Cloud? So mark that down uh, if those are topics that interest you. So. So today we're talking about outsourcing. Um, and so here's the agenda of what we're gonna talk about. We'll just do a brief commercial on Inflow CX and then we'll get into the content. And uh, we'll talk about current trends, you know, why companies outsource, you know, what are the keys uh, to outsourcing? And then our how our evaluation process and capabilities uh, for how we outsource. And then and if time permits, uh, share a couple of successful um, examples of outsourcing. So uh, appreciate you attending today. So uh, who we are, uh, who is InfoCX? Uh, so we're, we're a provider of strategic advisory deployment and managed services uh, for contact center customer experience and unified communication solutions. So in short, we help organizations evaluate, deploy, and optimize their customer engagement technology and strategy. And so our expertise spans across all the, um, the uh, technologies in the space today, the C CCAS, CX, UC, WFO, BPO, automation and analytics. Um, we uh, provide a vendor neutral approach for our technology uh, BPO and labor strategy evaluations. And um, you know, we've got uh, award-winning uh, implementation services as well on Genesis, NICE CX-159, Ring Central, and Zoom. Um, In short, you know, we do really three key things. We evaluate uh, both, we talked about technology, uh, we evaluate current technology as well uh, and outsourcing. We deploy those technologies and then we optimize uh, both people process and technology. Yeah, you know, we work across all the major technology platforms uh, in the in CCAS, CX ecosystem and UCAS ecosystems. Um, and then just a just a quick slide on some of the customers we work with. The takeaway here being that we work across all, uh, you know, a, a, a large number of industries and verticals. So let's let's kind of get into the content about is outsourcing right for you. I always like to start these webinars with kind of what are the current trends, and um, you know we're seeing we've seen a spike really uh, going into last year for clients that are considering evaluating and outsourcing uh, to supplement uh, uh, or for all of their contact service uh, center delivery. Um, we're seeing this being many first time uh, customers that have never considered outsourcing before. And, and some now, and some have also looked at it in the past and decided not to do it for a number of reasons, but are now uh, revisiting outsourcing as a solution. And so why is that? So, uh, you know, the first one and the obvious one is service delivery costs are rising. Agent wages are up over 11% in the last couple of years. Uh, average agent wage is about $15 an hour. And I think also, um, in a, you know, you've got a, you've seen an increase in enabling costs as well. Um, but, you know, as you as uh, I did a webinar last month on uh, remote work. I think now that you know, with with companies kind of struggling with remote work, it's kind of brought outsourcing back into the forefront as a viable solution. Additionally, the labor market is still tough. There's lots of opportunities out there. The clients we're working with um, are, in some cases, struggling to identify qualified labor to, to onboard that that labor uh, successfully and keep them. And so, if that's the case, then diversifying the sources of that labor is another uh, is a, becomes another viable solution. So why why are we seeing companies outsource? Um, you know, the, the, we talked about cost rising. So cost savings is an obvious one. Um, and that's especially true if you're open to nearshore or offshore service delivery. And in some cases, if you if you are, you know, there are some uh, uh, outsources out there that that offer fully remote uh, fully remote uh, workforces. There may be some domestic service delivery where cost is a uh, is a it, it, you can see cost savings as well. Um, you know, all in one 
uh, pricing also offers uh, predictability. Uh, so what that means is that typically with an outsourcer, they're going to give you a fully bundled rate uh, for all their services, and that includes you know not just the uh, the actual rate, the uh, the uh, wage for the uh, for the person, but also you know for the facility, the equipment, the management, all the other costs that go in the technology, the reporting, all the other costs that go into uh, uh, to go into delivering service. And so that you know that references the it's it's not a it, it's it's many times we work with clients and the first thing we have to go through is that you know they're comparing the hourly rate wage that they pay their employee to the hourly rate that the uh, the the outsourcer is quoting to them to provide services. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, uh, I'm paying I'm only paying fifteen dollars an hour now for labor. For a person, and this the this they want to charge me twenty dollars an hour for uh, near shore service delivery. It's going to cost me more money, and so yet we have to we work with clients to uh, understand the total cost of ownership of their their internal center. Some of those costs that I referenced before, you know, uh, management support, uh, you know, onboarding costs, all those other costs have to be taken into account when you. When you look at it, uh, when you when you look at outsourcing, or in really, you should look at it in terms of the total cost of your existing service delivery. Another reason, and I think this is one that um, that is uh, is a is a really key reason to look at outsourcing, and that's expertise. Um, outsourcing uh, gives you access to unique skill sets and capabilities that you may not be able to readily uh, reach uh, in your you know in the geographic markets that you're in. Or uh, you know, or some, or wherever you're doing that it could be language, it could be technical capabilities, or industry-specific knowledge. And so, you know, we see this a lot. I have a background in healthcare, and so you see this a lot with certain healthcare function um, um, outsourcing, where they you can get access to large quantity of uh, you know nurses or things like that that are available through outsourcing in other geographies that may not be available. Uh, readily uh, where uh, where where you're located, and language is another big one. Um, scalability is another one. So um, you know, lots of clients deal with business fluctuations due to seasonality or growth demands or things like that. And so outsourcing is a great way to address that. Uh, the you know the need for flexibility. And then lastly, uh, risk management. So uh, you know, outsourcing to geographically diverse locations mitigates the operational risks such as natural direct disasters or you know even just you know if you have centers located in um, you know cold weather markets I'm located in Omaha Nebraska we get snow here and that snow you know may shut down your existing contact center so having centers located in other geographies mitigates that risk uh, so you have the ability to offset offload that volume um, you know in the event of one of those uh, one of those situations. So what are the keys to success? Um, you know, the first one is really shared values and commitment, cultural alignment. So, you know, the this is you're having this is a relationship, right, that you're forming. And uh, both parties need to focus on building a long term strategic relationship that works for both parties. So it doesn't do a client any good. And this is another thing we work with uh, quite frequently um, to, you know, uh, to negotiate you know, all the 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 um, uh, you know, all the profits out of the outsourcers um, out of what the outsourcer said to really to kind of beat them up in the beginning over things. It really doesn't benefit that because you it it ultimately it'll ultimately cost you as a client down the road. And so it's this is as you're as you're uh, deciding what outsourcers to work with, we encourage our clients to really focus on identifying those uh, service providers. That have those shared values and have that, and you can have a mutual commitment to delivering your business. And then the cultural alignment piece is really important when you're starting to go offshore or nearshore to understand, you know, what's what's going on in those geographies. In many cases, you know, being familiar with the different holidays and things like that that are in that environment will all help you align with more effectively with that supplier. You have to understand that they are an extension of your business and that's really the, that's really a key factor uh, as you decide uh, as you decide on which company you're going to partner with long term 
it goes without saying that you have to have clearly defined goals and expectations. And, you know, this would be something where you would think, well, I, I should, really shouldn't even, of course. But again, uh, you know, we have to, we, we work with clients frequently to really define what they're looking for, how that work, what is this exact scope of work that's going to be done? How are, how is that work going to ramp? What are the performance expectations? Clients typically know, well, here's where my goals are today, but they don't really, we have to work to understand what is that ramp to that uh, the kind of um, the proficient service delivery. And so we can set clear expectations along the way. And then also, you know, have expect, you know, what are the expectations on communication and engagement requirements? And so all those things you want to work out on the front end so that as you go into the engagement and as you start to go work that you're not, you're not having to deal with these issues down the, loan, uh, down the road. Uh, another key success um, I have, you know, I have here is ownership. And, and this is one where we also have to, we work with clients on quite frequently. So there should be clear defined internal owners um, at the client for those outsourcer relationships and performance. So this, you know, uh, you cannot approach an outsourcing relationship and say, hey, it's an outsourcer, I'm gonna throw it over the wall and I'm going to, um, and I'm and I'm going to, um, uh, you know, it's just, it's just gonna work itself out. This is something that has to be managed. It's managed in a different way, but it has to be managed day by day uh, just like you would your own internal organization, your own internal out, uh, uh, your own internal client. And there, you know, and so you have to, and so what I found is that it's key to have somebody who owns that, owns that operation, owns that relationship, and is mutually vested in the success of that relationship. There has to be effective and consistent communication, uh, obviously. So, you know, regular, uh, you know, regular touch points. Uh, when I managed supplier organizations, we talked to our suppliers every single day. We had, we had both standard and ad hoc agendas, and then we did regular reviews of performance. In some cases, those are monthly performance reviews. So in some cases, they're quarterly performance reviews. But there has to be a consistent uh, communication framework that, you, uh, that, you're, that you're working with. And then lastly, a robust governance framework. So performance monitoring, regular reviews, and issue resolution are key. Because again, they're an extension of your existing business, and you want to make sure that you want to have using data that you know that everything is working out the way you want it to work out and deal with facts as opposed to dealing with it uh, with emotions. So, so just a little bit to talk about how we help clients align with uh, with uh, that uh, with those those types of requirements. So, you know, our in our BPO practice, uh, you know, we will work with our clients to really d understand you know, discovery and requirements gathering. So all those things, you know, the, the, performance uh, the performance metrics, the ramps to proficiency, what are, the, what are the, apps, the needs day one, day two, day three of that outsourcing uh, uh, of, that you need from an outsourcer, we'll gather all and document all those requirements. And, you know, that's a collaborative process on the front end. We'll share those requirements. We, you know, we have a network of suppliers that we work with. And we'll look for potential suppliers that meet those requirements, that have experience meeting those requirements. And then we, um, we share those requirements and opportunity with those, uh, with those BPOs and gauge you know, their interest. It has to be a mutual interest and that they have capacity to execute. And that's phase one. And then we schedule uh, you know, B, the interviews, uh, presentations with the, uh, with the BPOs. They'll, uh, they'll create a proposal to say, here's how we will uh, you know, here's how we'll address your business, and then uh, pricing, and we'll review those proposals with the, our clients, and then we'll come back with recommendations on uh, which uh, which BPOs we should move forward with. We down select. Um, you know, during the pandemic, there wasn't very many site visits, but we we uh, we we encourage site visits. You need, you need to go see where your work's being done, and then we'll partner with our clients to negotiate through that process. We'll help. Uh, we'll help. You know where where needed uh, on on services agreements and kickoff, and then we'll also serve as a resource for oversight uh, uh, of implementation and training and launch. Yeah, you know, we. I, I mentioned that we have a network of, uh, of it's over 100 BPOs, and you can see where the geographies where they're all uh, they're uh, they're located, and these are you know these are the these are the geographies where service delivery is done from. 
Uh, and then you can see the number of functions that we um, that we uh, that our clients are we are working with our clients on to help them outsource, and then the industries below. And so, lastly, I thought it might be interesting to kind of talk about a couple of use, uh, you know, case studies uh, of clients we've worked with from an outsourcing standpoint. Uh, and then uh, after that, we'll open it up to questions. So, uh, you know, we worked with a large international travel company. They had over 250 um, agents, uh, you know, uh, basically travel consultants pre-pandemic. And they were in the process pre-pandemic of, of adding uh, 75 agents just due to demand. Well, when the, you know, we all know what happened when the pandemic hit. Everything was shut down. Uh, travel obviously was uh, severely restricted, and they reduced their staff to 12 agents. Well, now we're, we're coming out of the pandemic, and um, and so now they need to ramp back up. And they've only been able to bring back 170 of their previous agents, and they had an immediate need to add uh, additional agents to support their current operation. And you know the the impact of the organization through understaffing was really you know poor, obviously poor customer experience, customers having to wait for long wait times and things like that. And so we were able to find uh, three, uh, well more than three, but selected three nearshore BPOs that had uh, travel experience that was lined up with the client's requirements. We went through the evaluation process that we described. And the client chose a BPL located in Central America that had the previous travel experience they were looking for and lined up to their values. And then the uh, when they looked at the the uh, when we went through the pricing proposal, you know, I talked about don't compare hourly wage to to hourly rate. In this case, there that hourly rate was two dollars an hour less than what they were paying domestic labor on top of the total cost of ownership. Uh, reductions as well. So it represented a significant reduction in expense in addition to improving the quality of service delivery for the client. And then lastly, um, you know, this one is a little different. We worked with the National Food Chain. This was uh, to do email outsourcing. They were, they were, they were handling uh, customer inquiries uh, uh, through their loyalty program. Uh, with internal resources, um, they were receiving way more demand than they could service. Um, there was, uh, you know, a huge amount of current customer inquiries that were stuck in a backlog. Uh, that, if I remember, the the response time was, you know, was days, or in some cases weeks, and it was creating a lot of uh, anxiety and a lot of, you know, um, negative customer uh, satisfaction, as you would under uh, understand, due to unresponsiveness. We're, we were able to, uh, going through that process we described, uh, find an outsourced email agent solution that was able to provide 24 seven uh, support. And uh, within 24 hours of engaging them, 75% of the backlog requests have been addressed and uh, almost all customer requests are responded to immediately. So the backlog is gone. And so from a customer satisfaction standpoint, um, uh, you know, the client's customer or the customers of the client's satisfaction increased dramatically. And uh, it's it's been a really positive experience uh, for for ever uh, for everyone, both the outsourcer and the and our client and of course their customers. So with that, i'm I'm gonna open it up to questions. Um, and, the, and I just I just looked at the question screen. Dan uh, Dan Akery and I worked together a long time ago. It's great to see you too. I, I don't know whether anyone else, if anyone has any questions uh, that I can answer for you uh, at the, at this time, so uh, so uh, Dan, that's an excellent question. Are, you, are we seeing an increased demand for fully remote, like uh, on on demand labor? I think in some cases, Dan, we're seeing that. In some use cases, we're seeing that, and I would say that it's. Um, but maybe not as much as should be, right? So it's it's a, you know, I'm, I'll use the word non-traditional. It's a, certainly a new model that, uh, you know, that uh, that I think clients, we, you know, maybe we could do a better job of familiarizing clients with that kind of capability. I think that there will be a demand for it. There are clients that need, you know, they want domestic service delivery for a variety of reasons. And in some cases, cost keeps them away from that. And this may be a viable solution, like I talked about earlier, uh, for that. And so, you know, I, I, I would see that as being 
you know, potentially a better solution or a more, it's an, I see it as emerging solution today. It be, may become more, uh, may become more uh, viable over time as people be, get more and more experienced with it. Great question, thank you. Any other questions? Well, I don't, since it doesn't appear that there are any more, I'd, I'd really like to thank you uh, for your time today. Uh, it's, you know, it's uh, it's certainly something I've got a lot of experience in the BPO business. So it's certainly something that I enjoy talking about. You know, if you want to get in touch with us, um, you, you can see our contact information right there. Don't hesitate to reach out and, you know, and please follow us uh, on all of our social media platforms. Um, you know, and like I said, uh, you know, look for more updates on future webinars on our social media uh, platforms as well. And so with that, I, again, I want to thank you for attending and I hope you all have a great day and uh, look forward to seeing you again on future on future podcasts or future webinars. Thank you very much.